So after a long time of having Wave 3, it's finally complete because Chitara has finally arrived. It's Morphin Time! Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome to another Thundercats Ultimates review. Today we'll be taking a look at Chitara. Now, Chitara was supposed to be part of Wave 3, and still technically is. She just got delayed beyond the other figures. Now, it was because her hips were misassembled with the wrong tooling, so they were too wide. So they sent it back to the factory and got the hips shrunk together, so that the proper proportions. And I'm really excited to look at this figure because we've been waiting for Chitara for a very, very long time. She wasn't in the original Mattel lineup. And of course, she was delayed from Wave 3. Now, of course, I have already reviewed the other parts of Wave 3, as well as Waves 1, 2, and 4. And if you haven't had a chance to check those out, check the playlist around the video. You should be able to find it and stuff on my channel. I'm really enjoying doing Thundercats stuff because I love it so deeply. Um, but Chitara here is definitely not the last thing coming from Thundercats. Apparently, Wave 5 is close to being on the way to customers, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because there's going to be more Thundercats coming at us, and then we'll see how long the Thunder Tank and Mandora will take from there, and whatever will come in the future, like when Wave 6 officially gets solicited with the LJN-inspired designs. There is still more Thundercats to cover, so you don't want to miss anything, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Leave a comment while you're down there and tell me which Thundercats release that's coming up are you most looking forward to, or which one they haven't made yet that you want to see. And if you hit that like button while you're there, it lets me know that you enjoyed the video. But let's get to it. Let's review Chitara and take a look and see if the wait was worth it for this figure. All right, so here's the packaging for Chitara. Pretty much what we'd expect to this point. Uh, here she is. Look at her. Uh, it's nice to finally get Chitara in the line. I think she's a highly requested character in general since the beginning. But let's look at the packaging. First of all, very nice artwork of Chitara, looking very cool, very buff, very strong. Love it. And we have her bio. The brave and noble Chitara is the fastest of the Thundercats and possesses the ability to run with lightning fast speed. Though she is often the voice of reason, Chitara is also an agile fighter. Her speed is particularly formidable when combined with offensive attacks from her bow staff. Furthermore, Chitara possesses a sixth sense, a mystical psychic ability which enables her to sense evil and have visions of past and future. So here she is, here's Chitara. Now let's talk about the hips. This was the thing they went back to correct. I think they're they're fine. I don't know exactly, you know, what some people are complaining about, but her hips look fine. I think her body shape is perfectly okay. I think my biggest problem with her as a figure is that uh, Pumira had the bicep swivels and Chitara does not. Uh, Pumira was modified off of a Mattel design. This was a brand new design. So no bicep swivels, uh, which is kind of lame but I kind of get it because there's no armor uh, to hide it underneath it at Pumira, but it does look better this way. It's just you have limited uh, bicep rotation, but I will counter that this uh, elbow swivel does all the work you really need a bicep swivel to do. So did we need it? No. Is it weird? Yes. Anyways, overall, I mean, she's painted nice. Uh, the interesting part is she is painted. And what I mean by that is that this, uh, this gives me sort of better designed NECA cartoon turtle vibes. Because if we look at her shoulder, uh, if my camera can focus on it, look at her shoulder, you can see that there is paint on the joint because when you put it all the way down, you can see color there. And if you pull it up on this side, you can see there is uh, plastic color there. So this is painted on the shoulder joint. Come on, focus. There we go. So this, this little uh, disc part is painted. Same thing with this one. Uh, you can see the spots are there, so when you raise it up, it looks fine. But you look underneath, and it uh, it is definitely a painted over joint. Same thing with her elbows. In fact, I had to uh, sort of crack the paint on this elbow to get it to bend. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad because, as you notice, I bend it, and it doesn't like there's not paint flying out of it. So it's definitely not over painted like NECA uh, cartoon Ninja Turtles. This one uh, wasn't as clean. And uh, you can see that there, not as clean. Uh, it seems like a lighter paint, but you know, it's not too bad overall. And it's not anything I'm really gonna complain about. And there's really nothing to talk about with the legs. Um, I mean, the hips work, that, that's a good thing. And they're not too wide. Now, the interesting part with Chitara here is she does have articulation. Uh, that's not that interesting. Every figure should have articulation because if it doesn't, it's a statue. Anyways, uh, ball joint neck, uh, up and down, all that. I do like the uh, spots painted on the back of the head, like they did, 
even though you won't see these 90% of the time with her hair being that way, it is, it is painted in. Also, you can actually turn her head. Uh, because of the extra range of movement in the ball joint, she actually has head movement that can, you know, pretty much you can do 360 even with the hair. And that is fantastic. Uh, I can't tell you how many times long hair has interacted with figures and not gone well. Uh, shoulders, uh, out, 360, elbows bend, rotate, uh, wrists rotate and pivot. Uh, she's got this upper torso. Uh, it's sort of a ball joint, but it really is only a swivel, um, which I mean, it's okay. Hips move out, they move forward, they move back. This is all a rubber overlay to allow her hips to move as far forward and as far back as possible. There is a slight rotation at the hip. There is a knee bend. She also has a knee rotation. And then you got ankles that move forward to back, left, right. And then there is no boot cut there, but it does rotate here. So you're pretty much all set. Now, of course, she's going to need some accessories to really take advantage of that articulation. So for hands, she comes with fists. She's got holding hands, open hands, and clawed open hands. In terms of alternate heads, she pretty much has the same face on all of them. But this one has the hair flowing backwards as if she's running. But can she do a running pose? So while it may take some extra support, she can kind of do a running pose. It's honestly not bad. I thought it would be much worse. You have to have some stand support. I don't see how she could just balance it out. Uh, but if you do if you do line her up just right, you can get a pretty decent running pose out of her, especially from the front angle. Uh, and the head does have enough tilt in it to make it look as natural as possible. Same with the body. So honestly, uh, you know, outside of just some slight limitations, if you get her up on a a stand, you could have her in a running pose if you so wish. The other alternate head is the one included because of the delay, which is one with glow in the dark eyes for her answering the thunder call. Uh, so it's just like with Panthro where we got an extra head for him. Uh, it's just kind of weird because nobody else has them. Just Chitara and Panthro because they had to get corrected. Um, but in terms of actual head sculpt, it looks good. It's the same normal head, just with different eyes. Now she does come with her iconic bow staff in both forms. So here it is in the short form. It's easy to drop. It does fit in the gauntlet, but now while you may want to just push it in like this, you actually need to push it from the backside and really squeeze it in there. There's a little bit of flex to the staff as well as the gauntlet, but it does store in her arm, which is pretty cool. It's a nice little storage piece. Though it is a little tricky to get in there, and uh, it holds in once you do. Like, they, they designed the staff to be a little bit longer than the slot, so it does have to wedge in. But once it wedges in, good to go. She does, of course, come with her bow staff in the full version, and it looks nice. It's nice, it's nice gold paint, too. It's really shiny. It doesn't seem to flake off, even though I've run it through the hands. Um, but, you know, it, it, it does seem nice overall and pretty sturdy. Uh, one thing I did notice when you do uh, widespread poses with her, wide leg poses... Uh, she is a little tricky to balance because uh, her feet are kind of small, but once you do, she's good to go. So you're probably wondering what's going on here because it kind of looks like Chitara is sort of trying to put out a brush fire with her staff. Yeah, let's talk about this piece. So Chitara's staff can shoot energy blasts in the show. I don't think they were ever this big, and this piece is gigantic. Uh, not only is it gigantic, it's also incredibly dense. This is... A solid piece of plastic. This ain't going anywhere. And her staff and her arms uh, cannot hold this thing up whatsoever. Her arms pretty much instantly give out to the weight. And as you can see, it just starts bowing the bow staff. Uh, yeah, even if you have it like supported like this, this just looks dumb. Uh, yeah, this was a misfire of an accessory. Uh, it, I thought it was going to be like Panthro's like spinning nunchuck thing where I just leave it in the box because it was too big to use on a shelf. I'm leaving this in the box because it's going to damage the figure and or the staff. Uh, this should have been a really lightweight plastic and probably like 20% smaller. As it is, kind of completely useless. So moving on to the Treasures of Thundera, we do have the Mirror of Truth from the episode Return of Thunder Cubs. Uh, this actually was used by Thunder Cub Chitara, not uh, Adult Chitara, but don't worry about that. As you can see, very nice uh, Thundarian emblem on here, very nicely painted. But what's really cool is the opposite side does have a mirror. So you can see, uh, hello, I'm distorted in the mirror. Anyways, uh, mirror surface. So it's got, you know, it's just a sticker, essentially, but it is a mirrored reflection surface, which is pretty awesome, because it actually is a mirror. I uh, didn't know that ahead of time, and that was a nice surprise to see. Here we have the magical flute from Thunder Cubs. 
Now, Chitara did use this in the episode, and it is held like this. It looks like a weird dowsing rod, but it is held like this, and she can't quite hold it. She doesn't have any uh, holding hands that move up and down. Otherwise, she'd be able to, like, simulate playing it. Um, but it, as it is now, it's not bad. I'm, I'm never going to display her with it, but it's cool to see uh, nonetheless. And her last accessories are the Locket of Lies. Uh, it comes in a closed version and an open version. These have string, very nicely painted. This was probably smart instead of trying to put a tiny hinge on this very small accessory. But this was from the episode Locket of Lies, and it is cool that they included both versions here. For fun, here's a comparison with Ultimate Chitara versus the LJN Vintage Chitara. Really cool to see the different approaches here um, and how very similar in a lot of ways they are. Uh, the LJN one really didn't take that many liberties with Chitara's design, and it kind of shows that they are very similar in a lot of ways. All right, so here is Chitara with her companions Lionel and Pumira. Here's the thing. I think that ultimately this Pumira was too tall. Like I had mentioned in my review, even though they said they were correcting the height, didn't quite happen. And I think that Pumira was supposed to be around Chitara sized. It would make some sense. But I think because Chitara next to Lionel looks right, Pumira looks too tall. Um, so that's why I have Pumira kind of in a crouch position all the time. But anyways, it's nice to see that we are sort of rescaling a little bit better uh, with Chitara versus Pumira. So here's Chitara with the core four Warrior Thundercats of the first season. Um, these are kind of like the main four that would go into combat. And she looks great with them. I think overall they do look good as a group. So here's the Thundercats group shot as we have now. So of the main Thundercats for the series, we're just missing Bengali, who's coming in Wave 5. And then we're missing updates of Wily Kit and Wily Cat for those that didn't have the Mattel versions. And we're still missing Snarf and Snarfer. Once we have them, the main team is sort of complete. And I'm curious to see how long that'll take to happen. But it will be nice to get Bengali in the next wave. But it's very nice to finally have Chitara slotted in with the rest of the lineup. So overall, Chitara is a great addition to the Thundercats Ultimates lineup. She poses dynamically, even with some limited articulation restrictions. I think she still pulls off very... There's very few poses she can't do. And that's what's really important. Is it the number of points of articulation or how they use them? And she uses them pretty well. Also overall, I gotta say, it's nice to have Chitara because we're kind of caught up. We got all of Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3, and Wave 4. And that's just fantastic. And I can't wait to see Wave 5 because apparently that's coming soon. And that is super exciting. So on that note, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss out on future Thundercats uploads, and check out some other videos on the channel while you have the chance. Also be sure to check out HairLashClub.com for news, reviews, and more, and my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643. And until next time, this is Sanat saying, goodbye.